Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you are all doing well. First of all, allow me to introduce myself. I am K. Lakshmi Patrao, your uh, new zoology lecturer. Came from APR School Puligada on promotion. Okay, let us discuss our second year content. Actually, the first chapter Human Anatomy and Physiology. This is the first chapter in your second year zoology. Human Anatomy and Physiology. What is Anatomy? What is Anatomy? Anatomy is a branch of science that deals with the structural aspects of an organism and their parts. The structural aspects of an organism and their parts. That is anatomy. It is a branch of biology. And then physiology. What is physiology? Okay, physiology. Physiology is the functional aspects is the functional aspects of an organism and their parts. You have already studied several organ systems in our body in your 10th class such as digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, excretory system, or reproductive system, nervous system, nervous system, and endocrine system. You have already studied in your 10th class about the basic knowledge, fundamental knowledge about all those systems. In the second year zoology content, you have to, you need to read all those systems in detail. However, this digestive system, and that means digestion and absorption. Digestion and absorption. Digestion and absorption. Under 30% of syllabus reduced, under 30% of reduced syllabus due to COVID-19, this entire system, digestive system, digestion and absorption is deleted. So let us start with the respiratory system. Let us start with the respiratory system. Okay. <coughs> what is the need for respiratory system? What is the what is the importance of respiratory system? Through digestion, and what is digestion? The breakdown of larger molecules into simple, diffusible, absorbable substances. We take uh, several types of food substances, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, fiber, water, these are all our uh, nutrients. These substances are in the form of larger molecules. So, first of they have to, they need to convert simple substances, absorbable and diffusible substances in your, in our elementary canal, in our gut, in our digestive tract by the action of enzymes. 
the because of the enzymatic reactions in your gut the larger molecules of substances are converted into simple diffusible absorbable substances then what will happen these substances are absorbed into the blood and are transported through blood circulation to the tissues at the tissues these substances are assimilated they enter into the enter the cells that is called assimilation so through digestion through digestion the absorption and uh, assimilation to so all these processes we will not get energy we obtain energy through respiration only and what will happen after the entry of these substances food substances into the cell what will happen actually these substances are oxidized that means these substances react with uh, oxygen then only we will obtain energy this is the only way to obtain energy so this is the importance of respiratory system for example c6h12o6 plus 6o2 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. Energy. This is the aerobic respiration equation, the cellular respiration, internal respiration equation. <coughs> but the end product of the end product of this catabolic process, respiration is a catabolic process the end product of this catabolic process is H2 water this water is called metabolic metabolic water this water is called metabolic water okay energy energy is in the form of heat and AT heat and AT. This is a potential energy and this is usable energy. Okay, this is the importance of this is the importance of respiration. Okay, respiration otherwise we can say that uh, respiration is calorie burner calorie burner and uh, energy provider. Energy burner and uh, energy energy provide. Okay. <coughs> okay. Respiration is a catabolic process, which is also a vital process to in uh, all the living organisms, include including plant cells. It is a vital process. The very essential process. Otherwise, we will not get energy. We, we, we simply we can say that we will not survive. Okay. Fishes. Fishes. We all know that. Uh, Fishes are all completely exclusively aquatic uh, animals. They perform gill respiration or bronchial respiration, bronchial respiration, gill respiration. And they use gills. 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 These are vascular structures. Vascular structures. What are vascular vascular structures? And they are supplied blood capillaries 
richly they are supplied blood capillaries richly and they use gills to perform the exchange of gases in fishes the flow of water and the flow of blood the flow of water in gill chambers the flow of blood in gills counter current mechanism this is called counter current mechanism and they both are quite opposite to each other that means the flow of water and the flow of blood this is the flow of water and this is the flow of blood these are quite opposite to each other that is called counter current mechanism it facilitates the maximum oxygenation of blood oxygenation and this counter current mechanism in fishes facilitates maximum oxygenation of blood and the flow of water and the flow of blood quite opposite to the directions of the flow of water the direction of the flow of blood in gills are uh, both are quite opposite to each other that mechanism is called counter current mechanism it facilitates the maximum oxygenation of uh, the maximum oxygenation of uh, blood and what about the uh, birds what about birds we uh, already studied uh, in the first year zoology birds they have a, a unique feature that is and they can the exchange of gases is occur even during expiration also expiration also the exchange of gases can also be occur even during expiration that is the unique feature of birds as they have air sacs as they have air sacs and para bronchi they having these uh, structures is the unique feature of birds make them very 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 active this feature make the birds very active and uh, insects insects a type study cockroach we already studied uh, in our uh, first year zoology insects have tracheal system tracheal system trachea tracheoles the tubular structures through this uh, system the air is directly supplied to each and every cell each and every cell is supplied the oxygen directly as they they, they did not have uh, a respiratory pigment hemoglobin in their the blood the colorless blood also called as hemolymph so that uh, developed a specialized tubular respiratory system that is called tracheal system through this uh, system the oxygen is directly supplied to the tissues each and every cells it is also a unique feature of uh, insects and other some of the other and other some of the arthropods also so make them very active <coughs> and then
I am going to discuss some more basic fundamental points regarding respiration. Among them, sickness. Mountain sickness. Mountain sickness in the people <coughs> ascending mountains. Mountain sickness occurs in the people ascending mountains. People ascending mountains. For example, at uh, 6000 meters height at 6000 and we can see and it is seen it is seen mountain sickness is seen in the people ascending mountains for example at 6000 meters height the partial pressure of water this is the partial the partial pressure of O2 the partial pressure of O2 at the height of 6000 meters is half of what it is at the sea level what is it what it is at the sea level Almost all PO2, that means partial pressure of O2 is half of what it is at the sea level. True. So, more than 6000 meters of height, we will not, we cannot survive without supplemental oxygen. Without supplemental oxygen, we cannot survive above the 6,000 6, meters of height. That is called mountain sickness. It leads to hypoxia. The low, very, very, very low levels of uh, oxygen in our blood, low levels and a very low of oxygen in the atmosphere also. So that condition, the hypoxia, that means hypoxia. Okay. And then, And then, in our respiratory movements, rib cage, rib cage, and uh, diaphragm. <clears throat> in our respiratory movements, rib cage and the diaphragm plays a major role. Rib cage, how it is formed? How it is formed? Ventrally, at our uh, chest region, there is a strong bone that is called sternum. Mid-ventral, that is called sternum. Mid-dorsal, we have vertebral column. There are 12 pairs of ribs, 12 pairs of ribs and sternum and vertebral column constitutes rib gauge in our chest cavity. One end of the rib is attached to the sternum bone ventrally and the other end of that rib is attached to the backbone. Similarly, 12 pairs of ribs forms sternum and vertebral column forms constitutes rib cage. In that rib cage, the vital organs in our body, vital organs such as heart, lungs, trachea, these, are, these organs are protected in our rib cage. Okay, rib cage and the diaphragm. What is diaphragm? Diaphragm is a, a dome-like muscular, skeletal muscle, muscular structure, a dome-like muscular structure that separates 
our body cavity into a small upper chest cavity or thoracic cavity and large abdominal cavity. And in our body cavity, between the thoracic cavity or chest cavity and the abdomen, there is a dome like muscular structure is there that is called a diaphragm. In our respiratory movements, particularly rib gauge and diaphragm plays an important role. <coughs> our respiratory movements are the things which are occurred in our respiration. Uh, such as inhalation, expiration, uh, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, the rate of respiration, the depth of respiration, all these things are completely under the control of our nervous system. For example, inhalation, inhalation and exhalation, inhalation and exhalation. The air enter into the lungs, inhalation. The air which is sent out of the lungs, out of the body, that is exhalation. The both are completely under the control of medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata. And uh, the rate and the depth of uh, respiration. The rate and the depth of respiration are under the control of pons, pons verily of the brain stem, pons verily of the brain stem. <coughs> okay. Do you know some aquatic animals? Aquatic, not aquatic animals, aquatic mammals. Aquatic mammals. We cannot hold the breath for a long. We are forced to we are forced to breathe. We cannot hold the breath, but aquatic mammals such as elephants, whales, dolphins, etc. They can remain under the water for about uh, more than two hours. They are mammals actually. They have pulmonary respiration. With the help of lungs, they can perform respiration. Though they, they, they remain under the underwater for about uh, two hours, how can they survive? This is the, this is our question. How can they survive? Remember, you have already studied in your class under the heading of adaptations in aquatic mammals. Adaptations in aquatic mammals. Try to, try to remember. As they have a special respiratory pigment, myoglobin in their muscles. Myoglobin in their muscles. It has more affinity to oxygen, to the natural linking. So that uh, in this way they can survive underwater for a 
for about uh, two or more hours. This is uh, an aquatic adaptation for an aquatic mode of life. Okay. Okay, we all know that uh, energy is continuously supplied to <coughs> our cells. Energy is provided <coughs> in the and energy, we will get energy, we will obtain energy only when the food substances, the simple molecules of food substances oxidized in the inside the cells, that is called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration. Okay, respiration, the external respiration, the external respiration, also called ventilation ventilation because it gives importance it gives importance on the on the, <coughs> the air enter into the lungs at the same time the air is sent out from the lungs out of the body and uh, other than the energy producing sites other than the energy producing sites just it enters the uh, lung through our respiratory tract at the same time the air goes out outside the outside the uh, energy producing sites what are the energy producing sites cells cells are the energy producing sites Okay, next, internal respiration. Internal respiration. Also called cellular respiration. Internal respiration or cellular respiration. the simple molecules of nutrients, nutrients of various food substances like glucose, amino acid and fatty acids and fatty acids These substances, of these substances inside the cell which produces energy in the form of heat and ATP. Okay, this is called internal respiration and this is called external respiration. Okay, respiration is of two kinds Respiration is of two kinds. Aerobic respiration and uh, anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration and uh, aerobic respiration. What are the characteristics of anaerobic respiration? 
i anaerobic respiration. In absence of O2, it occurs. It occurs in absence of O2. And uh, incomplete breakdown of molecules. Incomplete breakdown of molecules and low yield of energy because of the incomplete breakdown of molecules it is very low more of that in absence of water that means it does not require oxygen what are the examples for anaerobic respiration yeast bacteria and muscles muscles under some specific conditions muscles also perform anaerobic respiration recap what we have studied in 10th uh, class about anaerobic respiration during vigorous exercise during vigorous exercise our muscles can perform anaerobic respiration okay c6 h12 o6 yeast 2 co2 plus 2 c2 h5 oh ethanol plus only 2 it very little energy this is also called fermentation this type of anaerobic respiration is also God, recall, 8th class and 10th class you have studied. This is uh, this type of anaerobic fermentation. And then there is another type of uh, anaerobic This is H equal O6. Example, bacteria. Uh, lactobacillus bacteria like that. Uh, muscles, muscles. 2C3 H6O3 plus 2A. Only 2A. This is lactic acid. Two molecules of lactic acid. <coughs> because of the in absence of O2 because of the incomplete breakdown of molecules low yield of energy is produced these two examples for anaerobic respiration and what about aerobic respiration we have already discussed in this class that is the, uh, what are the conditions, what are the, what are the characteristics of aerobic respiration in, in the presence of presence of O2 and it requires oxygen and complete breakdown of molecules complete breakdown of molecules and uh, high energy c6 h12 o6 
plus 6 O2 and the presence of O2. And that uh, substance, glucose, is completely break down into carbon dioxide and oxygen. And from one molecule of glucose, 36 molecules of ATP we can get. We can obtain high yield of uh, energy. 36 molecules of ATP. These are the differences between uh, anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration and examples. And then Respiratory organs, respiratory mechanisms. <coughs> the mechanism of breathing in various organisms. The mechanism of breathing in various organisms mainly depends on mainly depends on their habitats, their habitat. That means land or uh, water. Whether they live on land or whether they live in water. The mechanism of breathing in various organisms mainly depends on their habitats. For example, Aquatic animals, they take dissolved oxygen, oxygen which is uh, dissolved in the water, dissolved oxygen. For that uh, separate respiratory, a specialized respiratory organs are needed. Whereas the organisms which can live on land, they can take free oxygen from the atmosphere. For that, they have to develop different uh, kind of uh, respiratory organs. So, the mechanism of breathing is mainly depends on their habitat and uh, body organization. Body organization, that means simple or uh, complex simple or complex. For example, in your first year zoology, there are different types of uh, grades of organization. Cellular grade of organization, and uh, tissue grade of organization, organ grade of organization, and organ system grade of organization. It is simple to complex. The body organization, the evolutionary aspect we are talking simple to complex depends on the body organization also the mechanism of breathing is dependent and then type of circulatory 
टाइप ऑफ सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम यू ऑल नो दैट देर आर मेनली ओपन टाइप ऑफ सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम क्लोज टाइप ऑफ सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम एंड सम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिजम्स डू नॉट हैव एनी रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट फॉर एग्जांपल इंसेक्ट्स दे डू नॉट हैव ए रेस्पिरेटरी पिगमेंट and in case of earthworms leeches and all vertebrates including human beings have a specific respiratory pigment that is hemoglobin so depend on these things generally uh, what type of breathing mechanisms they have simply depends okay next different types of respiratory organs different types of respiratory organs for example protozoans a cellular unicellular organisms protozoans and other uh, simple aquatic animals like uh, sponges sponges and nidarians nidarians and uh, aquatic forms uh, like flatworms they do not have any specific respiratory organs they can take dissolved oxygen through a simple process called diffusion over their uh, entire body surface through their body entire body surface diffusion simple diffusion and uh, earthworms earthworms <coughs> body wall moich 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 body wall the body wall of uh, the muscular body wall of earthworm is always moich in nature and uh, the body wall is uh, uh, richly supplied with uh, blood capillaries these two conditions are uh, very much essential for the exchange of gases so through diffusion that no, no specific respiratory organs and uh, insects we have already discussed it, that uh, a specialized uh, unique feature having a tracheal respiratory tracheal system tracheal system and other arthropods like uh, spiders scorpions the terrestrial forms they have book lungs they have book lungs the <coughs> protozoans sponges nidarians flatworms no specific respiratory in them no among them no specific respiratory organs through diffusion over the entire body surface they can take a dissolved oxygen at the same time carbon dioxide is sent uh, into the worm in atoms respiratory system uh, no respiratory no, no specific respiratory organs blood circulatory system digestive system excretory system nervous system all the systems are developed even though uh, no the specific respiratory organs in earthworms so earthworms perform their uh, respiration uh, the thing but uh, cutaneous respiration or dermal respiration we can say that dermal respiration or cutaneous respiration but that uh, they always keep their uh, uh, skin uh, moist more about that uh, their body wall muscular body wall is richly supplied with uh, uh, blood capillaries 
next uh, about insects trachea trachea the very larger group of animals insects in arthropod in arthropoda not only in arthropoda in the total animal kingdom this is the largest uh, group of uh, animals uh, the unique nature of uh, these animals uh, having presence of trachea and then spiders and the scorpions are uh, terrestrial forms arthropods booklums they have booklums and other uh, aquatic uh, aquatic arthropods like uh, crabs and uh, prawns and uh, mollusks mollusks they have gills vascular structures for the exchange of gases and uh, what about fishes and what about fishes we have already discussed gills gill respiration branchial respiration <coughs> and uh, not only fishes the larvae of amphibians the larvae of amphibians also have gills the larvae of amphibians best example tadpole tadpole larva a frog has gills to perform respiration after metamorphosis uh, but in whereas in frogs adult frogs in adult frogs that means amphibians in amphibians adult frogs adult amphibians lives skin and also buccal cavity buccal cavity is also play uh, uh, is also help in exchange of gases up to some extent buccal cavity buccal respiration skin that means dermal respiration or cutaneous respiration and lungs pulmonary respiration and they use frogs adult frogs and toads they use all these structures to perform respiration to survey survey <clears throat> and next uh, reptiles eels and mammals lungs lungs are vascular bags lungs are vascular bags they have lungs uh, in addition to the lungs uh, in eels particularly uh, we discussed earlier as they have uh, eel sacs and parabranchi this is the unique feature of uh, eels among all of them animals all of them man have developed very well developed respiratory system so we will discuss the structural aspects we will discuss the structural aspects of a uh, uh, respiratory system of man in the next class okay thank you moreover that finally particularly during this period covid 19 take care about your health without a mask we should not go outside and uh, you wash your hands frequently thoroughly stay home stay and uh, i would like to say that uh, respect everyone and suspect everyone take care all the best thank you bye